Khloe Kardashian making one of those like Pepsi commercials during what I would argue is like the most heightened form of social justice equality mission thing from 2020 is probably one of the most disconnected things I've ever actually seen. Like if you've seen that commercial and you've watched it and then you know when it was actually like posted and uploaded, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was like the worst possible way to put somebody who's totally disconnected in the world to something like that. But then I realized it happens all the time, right? Like old people typically or huge ass corporations are so massively disconnected from what's going on in the world that when they do try to make something that's more about like social justice, peace, excitement and perseverance, we know the young kids. It sucks. It almost always, 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 always sucks. But every once in a while, they do get it right because guess what? Eventually enough money will get you the answer to pretty much everything, including happiness. So I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. And today we're talking about cars. More specifically, we're talking about why Scion actually was ever made and then why Toyota decided to kill it off. Because when it comes down to it, a couple old folks got together and really started to say, you know what I think? I think maybe that next generation has money and our current generation is is dying a little bit. So if you guys could, please don't forget to subscribe. And of course, thank you so much for following along. Drop a comment on what you think about Scion as a brand and whether you actually wanted to keep them running or not. I think now that Toyota's up and rocking with some really cool stuff, I don't think Scion's really ever coming back. P.S. We got some new t-shirts, which is pretty cool. Now, don't wear this one in how in a house with six cats you know this black it just doesn't work very well it's just not a very good idea this one is the keep it modified shirt it's actually really cool the back has the 430 in its stock and it's modified form and if you guys are interested in this shirt you can check it out below and also it's tagged on youtube now because we're official okay we're super official. We are as official as it gets. So Scion actually started in 2003. It lasted until like 2016. And when it was started, it gave a lot of really great options in terms of affordable cars. You see, Scion was always going to be an entry level, like volume over quality car component. They did a couple things to actually make it really simple. Like the original cars, they were all monospec, meaning that they only really came in one specification, one trim package. You couldn't really upsize much on a Scion, which kept prices really, really low. And back in 2003, when they were coming to market, one of the coolest things that they did is they almost allowed you to build and buy the entire car, do almost the entire process online. And then from there, you could just go to a Scion dealership, buy the car, and you were out on your merry way. A lot of stuff was actually taken care of on the internet prior to you actually having to go into a dealership. That was a very awesome thing. And they had like a no haggle pricing, which is pretty standard nowadays, but they had a no haggle pricing. So then from there, you just, you saw a cheap car, you put one trim on it, you know, it's a little bit like Taco Bell. It's the same five ingredients wrapped in four different versions of a tortilla. And you pretty much have what Scion's business model was except for cars and not for shitty food, which by the way, Taco John's is better than Taco Bell. It is. I don't understand how this is even a dialogue or a conversation to have with individuals. It's, it's, not, it's not as good, okay? The XA was actually really great for college. It was a really entry level car. And if you remember the XA, which looks really ugly now, it was actually relatively pretty popular. The XB was awesome. I know people like hate this thing, but it was ugly, but it was really cool. If you had an XB back in the day when it first came out, you were like big shit. You were the dog. You were typically the gal. You had the, the feather in your hair. You know, you remember that? And then you were also the one that also had the buckle jeans that typically you had a credit card for, then you uh, went into debt and then you became one of those people that never recovered from debt until you're like in your mid thirties and you're an RN and you actually are still paying off your college student loan debt because you used all your college student loan debt in 2012 to 2014 because you wanted to spend money on having a really nice apartment because you didn't want to show that you were lower than an economic class than what you wanted to perceive. <sighs> Wow, man. The XB was innovative. It was different. It was young and hip, and they put rap music to the commercials. It was cool, okay? And then finally, the TC. Now the TC, in my opinion, the Tiburon Coupe, which wasn't really the Tiburon Coupe, but what I can say is that the TC was actually a really cool car. It was the most popular Scion within the lineup before XB took it back in 2008. This was a really neat car. And what made it fun was that they did start introducing very unique things to the car. They introduced 
introduced a supercharger kit that you could get for $3,400 if you really wanted to. They added like different body kits that you could put on the car. They tried to make it so that you could modify the car at the dealership or you can get yourself a really cheap TC with like less than 200 horsepower right out of the gate. And you didn't even have to worry about it. Like that was what made it so cool. And because Scion is nothing more than the experimental arm of Toyota, Scion was really able to do whatever it is that they wanted to do as long as they stayed underneath a certain floor. And this was peak Scion because you had pretty much everyone loving the brand, everyone loving the models, everybody in college was running Scions. It was like, it was the renegade car brand before the renegade was a thing, okay? This was peak Scion times. So and because it was backed by Toyota, Scion was really thriving. One of the coolest, most interesting things about Scion though is that it was never really built to be a long-term play for Toyota. It was meant to simply get the youth interjected with a brand and then get that brand interjected with Toyota. If you ever notice that Scion actually has the youngest buying demographic of any auto manufacturer out there, or at least they did. But if you look at the group now that probably was buying Scions, they're buying Toyotas, they're buying 4Runners, they're buying Tacomas, they're buying RAV4s, they're buying all that sort of stuff, which is actually ear really creepy because that was essentially what a bunch of old people in some sort of boardroom somewhere decided that they wanted to do with the Scion brand. And over time, they were gonna try to keep both, but there was a lot of people growing a ton of confidence in the Toyota brand. A lot of people were starting to love that brand again. And Toyota was doing a good job at kind of coming back into the younger market. They were no longer just seen as the old folks around the block. They were actually producing some really cool stuff. And that was really where Scion started to die. People were actually starting to look for vehicles that were a little bit more individualistic. They were more built for them. They weren't just an, a standard car with some fun marketing. They actually wanted something that felt like it was their personality. And Scion wasn't doing anything like that. They weren't really promoting anything about it. They were just doing really cool marketing around a really basic car. And people started to see that. And once the TC came through, nothing else really sold as well as it it needed to to keep the brand alive. And as more people were jumping into Toyota, Scion started to lose the audience that it had gained a lot for. And when you put Scion against a lot of those other entry level brands, the other ones kind of do it better. They have some sort of, you know, perk in terms of warranty. They have some sort of perk in terms of power or interior. And Scion just kind of did all of it okay which is really what Toyota does just at a higher price point. Toyota does everything great. Scion did everything okay and when you get to the okay to great there are people that are looking for something in the middle they want a great engine but they're okay with everything else they want a great interior but they're okay with everything else scion never really had anything within its lineup that was great and that's really what made scion start to die off as a brand but it was nothing more than like a shoehorn into this young market get them to loan money get them to lease a car get them to understand the brand and feel comfortable around it and then use all that data all that marketing into pushing them into the Toyota lineup, which is just such a weird thing to me that there'd be a company out there that would invest hundreds of millions of dollars into an auto manufacturer just to capture a market segmentation for 10 years. Not even, 13 years, that's more than 10. But still, it's just a crazy thought. And over time, it continued to grow. So pretty much, if you see someone rocking around with like a Toyota RAV4, a Tacoma, a pre-runner of any size, they were probably an, a TC guy, okay? If it's a girl, maybe an XA or an XB. I'm just saying that Scion laid the framework of what the, the import tuner culture from an OE perspective looked like in the United States in the early 2000s. And people really vibed with it. And I think that because of that, Scion was successful for such a long period of time until people realized that there were other cars besides the import tuners. Before they started to realize that, hey, you could get a pretty good car out of Volkswagen. And over time, people just started to switch and then Scion died because Toyota just murdered it. And they are not really that mad about it. It's just a thing that happens in the automotive industry. And I'm happy that Toyota's got some cool shit, but I do kind of miss the XB. It was kind of a cool, like a little funky, ugly thing. You know, it's like, it was ugly. There's, there's something about ugly cars that's kind of cool. I, I don't know, maybe I'm just an idiot, but you guys let me know what you think, or if you knew this already, drop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, thanks for watching. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. And today, we got to talk about cars. Woo!